Hello everyone, Morris here, and today is the start of Season 5 for Axie Infinity Origins, and we have three new starter Axies, and also a new contest coming up in two days with AXS Rewards. Okay, so uh, very exciting because these three new starter axes are actually you know, pretty interesting. I must say some are more interesting than others, but definitely worth looking at. And uh, there are more reasons to that they are worth looking at is because there will be a new contest coming up that will give you AXS rewards if you rank the top 100 uh, in the contest. And yeah, I'll talk more about the contest, but let's just get into the starter axes first. Okay, so here's just my first impressions. Of course, haven't really like tested them yet, uh, but like, just looking at their uh, cards and basically give me a, like, give you a, a first view of what I think about uh, these axes. So first up is Momo, which is a bird. Uh, then we can talk about the runes and charms first. Even though, of course, the runes and charms can be applied to any bird axes, right? Or even like birds cards, right? Um, that's not Momo, and of course Momo can also carry other runes as well, um, other bird runes, so it doesn't have to be that Momo Daga goes into Momo, but uh, okay, let's just talk about Momo Daga first. So Momo Daga, let's make it a bit bigger, so uh, it's still probably a bit small, uh, but of course just go to the blog post for like a more clearer picture and of course more uh, detailed explanation as well. Uh, anyway, Momo Daga, it says, until round 4, when your turn starts, adds one Feather Dagger to your hand. And then Feather Daggers are uh, exiled on use for the Axe that has this rune. Okay, And on targets with less than 5 weak, apply 2 weak. Okay, So basically, if you play Feather Dagger, um, instead of being banished, uh, it gets exiled for this particular Axe that has the rune. And also the Feather Dagger, uh, when it hits the target, it will apply 2 weeks if the opponent has less than 5 weak. Or if the target has less than five weeks, so a lot to, you know in one rune, and basically it gives you four feather dagger. So it's a good way of getting feather dagger, especially in rare, where you don't really get you know uh, a lot of ways of getting feather dagger. Maybe only like from wing horn or something, right? So yeah, in this case, it's good to. Uh, be able to get Feather Dagger is because you know, there, there'll be reasons why, because there are cards that scale with Feather Dagger. And of course, in general, Feather Dagger, Feather Dagger is good um, for just scaling up your Feather uh, damage stacks, but also maybe there are some synergies with playing zero cost cards, just playing cards during a turn or something. Okay, uh, and the weak is also good, of course, just to you know slow down the opponent. But usually, uh, you're gonna hit into the front, and you know the front is usually like a tank that doesn't really do that too much damage, so the weak doesn't matter as much. Okay, so in terms of uh, okay, I'm about the charm. The charm not, not too exciting. It's a four PP. There's a lot of investment. Give you one feather, and then plus one feather per energy spent, meaning. If you put it on a one cost card, it gives you two feather, which is uh, okay. Um, yeah, I would say this is okay if you want to get some feather, but there are definitely better ways of getting feathers, like try feather and maybe even spears. Even though uh, Momo doesn't have spears, so uh, yeah, might not be the best fit. But of course, this charm can be put on any bird's cards with four PP. So yeah, maybe a good way of getting some feathers, but maybe in rare. Okay, so let's actually look into the cards because those are the interesting part. And first we have Concentrate, which is a power uh, innate, of course. Uh, but the key part is that it doesn't have target any ally, meaning it can only be applied on Momo. And what the power does is that it says each hit against an enemy adds 2 bonus damage up to a plus 20 to that enemy for the rest of the battle. Okay, so um, the... Good side, of course, is that it's like it, the power, the bonus damage scales up pretty quickly. I right? guess every hit you get two. The downside is that it doesn't translate into like other axes or other enemy because it's kind of independent, right? Uh, for each particular enemy. So meaning, if you stack up a lot for this enemy, once you kill this enemy, for the next enemy, you don't really have that. So you have to kind of like do that. Um, stacking of this damage buff independently for each opponent's axie. So that is kind of the downside, but still I think um, yeah, pretty strong uh, as you can see because there are a lot of ways to stack like feather daggers and also multi-hit cards. 
Okay, let's talk about the main multi-hit cards for Momo and the two main ones are Feathery Darts. So Feathery Dart for it, oh Feathery Dart and Death Shower is the other one. So Feathery Dart first first is a uh, one cost twenty-five attack, uh, deal three hits. So um, already deals 75 damage, which is not bad. If you have concentrate, it will already deal a bit more. And of course, uh, with a lot of these feather, uh, sorry, um, multi-hit cards, it scales pretty well with bonus damage, so that it probably includes feather as well. So feather will be a good match. Uh, and then uh, let's talk about death shower because this is the one that's definitely uh, more impactful. So it's a two cost, 25 base power and it deals 5 hits um, yeah so it's similar to Feather Fan in a way Feather Fan can deal 7 hits, this one deals 5 hits only so maybe on like a surface it's a bit weaker but uh, there are 2 upsides so one thing that I didn't really mention but Feathery Darts and Death Shower both have this effect of target any enemy and that is very 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 strong of course opponents usually like, will play a taunt or something um, especially uh, like as the Gorya's main kind of team, right? a lot of teams, if they have only one carry, uh, they will play Taunt, which is kind of the downside or the weakness of Momo. But uh, if, yeah, for teams that doesn't have Taunt, you can you know, very easily snipe off uh, one of the opponent's axes because this you, know, you can uh, you can use these cards to target any enemy. Okay, so for uh, Death Shower. Uh, so it deals 5 hits, sure, but uh, the interesting part of course is that it says exile all fairy daggers from your hand. So this is where there's this fairy dagger synergy, but of course the, the, there's a bit of a trade-off, right? If you don't play the fairy dagger, right? so meaning if you give up the fairy daggers, um, then you actually get bonus plus 5 damage per, I assume here is per fairy daggers that is exiled through this um, death showers effect. So the trade-off, of course, is that if you don't play a fair dagger, uh, you, sh you get the bonus damage, but then you don't get to scale up your concentrate, you don't get to scale up your feather using the fair dagger. So this is actually quite tricky to use because sometimes uh, you might want to just use the fair dagger to scale up your uh, feather bonus damage and scale up your concentrate, but then the flip side is then you don't get as much feather, uh, sorry, the bonus damage for the death shower. Uh, but still, I think this could be very, 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 very strong and um, mystic with the feather descent rune, um, just because then it allows you to like, very easily get a lot more feather daggers. And yeah, this will scale pretty, pretty fast, I would say, with the feather descent. But before that. Um, yeah, it might be like more limited in terms of the ways in which you can get feather. Uh, sorry, uh, which you can get feather dagger. Uh, but still, I think uh, well, there are ways of getting feather dagger as you'll see later. Okay, maybe might as well just go through those first. So, um, big sister and little 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 bro are basically two cards that kind of like comes together. So. Uh, big Sister first. So Big Sister is a zero cost ten heal, so it's always good. You know, a zero cost ten heal kind of card, or just in general heal card. You can put a white sage or something on this. Then uh, it's basically like a zero cost cleanse kind of card. Uh, so, but here uh, the interesting effect is that it adds one little bro to this card pile. So basically, you can have multiple copies of this little bro. And what little bro does is that it is a one cost twenty five damage card. And uh, it's in a way similar to Tri Feather in the sense that it deals three, randomly deals three hits, but the effect is that it says next turn add a fair dagger to your hand per unique enemy hit. So if it hits three enemy, then you get three fair dagger, which is good. The tricky part about these well, these two cards in general is that. Yeah, it's a bit slow because you only get the fair dagger next turn and also it hits randomly, meaning you can't really target one opponent and KO it, so it's more like an AoE kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm not like too excited. Now, having said that, you, you know, you are able to get 
more little little bro into the deck. I don't know if it actually is a good, good thing or bad thing just because it actually kind of dilutes your deck if it's not such a good card and little bro is not that good of a card. Um, especially if there are, once you get to, like, there, there's just other ways in which you can get Fairy Dagger then, yeah. So not not too sure about these two cards. But I think you have to play and see how, how, how it feels in terms of, you know, how, how easy you can get Fairy Dagger. Okay, so the last card, which I think is actually probably the most interesting card, uh, and it is a zero cost card, uh, skill card is a brimstone, and it says with uh, five or less than or equal to five cards in your hand, then move one random skill or secret from the discard pile to hand, right? To hand is the keyword here, I think. Okay, otherwise move an attack card and exile. Okay, so at least it's exile, meaning once you use it once, then it's gone. So that is like the, the I guess, what keeps this card in check in a way. So you can't use it multiple times, you can only use it once. But it, you know, it is a zero cost card. It allows you to basically, in a way, tutor for a card that you just played and put it back in your hand. Uh, so, so especially like when you start your second rotation or something, right? Then you really don't have cards in the, in the discard pile. Then basically allows you to play a card, then get it back to your hand and play it again. So yeah, this card like alone might be enough for actually some builds to actually you know run this, just because I'm um, thinking about things like the metamorphosis. Uh, with the two shell kind of combo, right, where it basically just allows you to play more cards uh, during a turn. Uh, of course, downside is there's no retain, so you might have to put a tape on it or something. But yeah, I think it can still be like you know something that people might use it, similar to how I guess people run Ina just for magic sack. So maybe that's something to you know, look into. Okay, so that is for Momo. And um, yeah, I guess uh, just to wrap up, right, is that there are really two ways I think I can see, or at least two ways you can run Momo, right? One is basically just use it as a carry, uh, do massive damage uh, with the, you know, the, the bonus damage and all these cards, right? Um, Feathery Darts and Death Shower. The other way is really like a Metamorphosis or some, some sort of other combo that I like, you know, uses Brimstone to basically allows you to play a particular card twice, right? You play it, draw it back again and play it again uh, in the, on the same turn and yeah that could be pretty strong okay so next one we have uh, Pomodoro okay so Pomodoro uh, is a book okay uh, with four shield cards as you can see here one attack card uh, one well, zero cost which is always good uh, but then I must say it's not too exciting let's just talk about the rune first. The rune is from Domo's pen, which is that uh, wherever this actually grants shield to other allies, I notice al other allies, right? meaning if you put shield on yourself, it doesn't really count. Okay, but when it gives shield to other allies, then its single attack gets plus five attack and it caps at 40. So I must say it's a bit tricky. Of course, it actually fits the theme of bug where apply shield and then like do single attack kind of thing. But it's just a bit tricky to use this because it requires that Axie, it doesn't have to be Pomodoro, right? You can put it on other bugs as well. Uh, but it, allows that, well, it requires that Axie to have some shield card and some attack cards for this to be useful. And so it kind of limits the power of this for sure because, yeah, assuming maybe you have three shield cards, three attack cards, then yeah, then it's still a bit weird because it's very mid-rangey kind of thing, right? Um, yeah, so it's, it's really hard to, to actually kind of fit into a particular archetype. And sometimes I'm thinking maybe Sturdy Fighter, when it's, once you get to Epic, would be even better than this, is because it's also like doing shield and doing damage and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, maybe in uh, Rare, it, I don't know, like it, it could work in some way, but of course the people will try and make it work, especially for the event. Uh, it's gonna be fun to try and see how it will work. And for the charm, yeah, Cocoon Whistle is nothing exciting, plus one Cocoon per energy spent. Yeah, so really not, not, not too much to say. I mean, there are other ways in which you can get Cocoon a lot easier. So 
yeah, so let's just get into the cards. So of course, leaf bug, right? there are two copies of leaf bugs here. Uh, it's basically the same as the other leaf bugs, right? Um, this is exactly the same. So uh, a lot better way of getting cocoon is through leaf bug. It can basically give you five uh, for one leaf bug plate. So yeah, this is, I would say, good cards in general. But of course, uh, uh, why pay Pomodoro if you can just play other axes with leaf bug as well, like double leaf bug. Okay, so let's get into the more like unique card. So Passion, zero cost, 10 heal again, and uh, it says Cleanse, so target any ally and cleanse. So it has an inbuilt cleanse, so that's a, that, that means you know you might spare some PP for other things, so you don't have to put a White Sage, or maybe you can put a White Sage and cleanse twice, uh, which is probably quite good against Poison. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I guess there's a zero cost card that might get you out of uh, sleep as well. Okay, and then uh, Platypus is uh, a 1 cost uh, 20, okay, let me zoom in a bit, like 1 cost 20 shield, and shield or ally, so it's an AoE shield, and then it says this card oh, it has retained, and this card gets 10 plus 10 shield per turn retained, and up to 40 shield. Basically, it's a shield version of Cucumber Slice. Uh, yeah, it gives you a way of basically shielding other allies, so buffs the charm, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, rune, if you have the rune. Uh, otherwise, I don't know, maybe good against AoE, of course you can play it with the White Sage as well to go AoE cleanse, which is probably the, the best use of it, uh, especially against Poison. But still, yeah, against Poison, you don't want to play Shield, right? So that's the thing, right? If it's a heal, it might even be better just because uh, you heal up the Poison. But Shield against Poison doesn't do too well. Maybe it's good against an AoE or something, but otherwise... Mm, um, I guess the other way of using it is actually AoE shield and then you have other axes with square teeth then you can actually use the sh uh, shield for attack. So that's another way to look at it. Okay, Lost Dream. Lost Dream, uh, 1 cost, 60 shield and target any ally, draw 1 card. Okay, I quite like this card, right? Okay, first of all is that um, it's a card draw. So uh, yeah, so if you just run out of resources, you can play this card for card draw. But the interesting part is that it is a I think the only ethereal card uh, so far uh, that playable. So ethereal actually means uh, if it's not played or if it's in your hand by the end of the turn, then this card get banished. So in a way, like uh, it's also a good way of thinning out your deck and just you know by not playing it basically or like keeping it in your hand. Then or well, you don't even have to keep right. It's just that if you don't play it, it's in your hand. If it's not played, then you'll get banished. And when banished. Grant 25 shield to all allies. So I would say if you have a lot of resources, you just don't play this card, let it ethereal or let it banish, and then you get the AoE shield, which again contribute to the, the rune buff. Uh, but the key part is that it thins out your deck, which I think is pretty good. But of course, uh, I think it might be too good if you put it on other axes. But yeah, uh, Pomodoro, unfortunately, is just the other cards are not the best. Uh, but this is a good card, I would say. Uh, so it's very flexible. If you need uh, resources, you know, play it for a card draw. If you don't uh, need resources, just banish it and you know, get the shield, uh, get the AOE shield, and then um, yeah, just thin thins out your deck. Okay, finally we have Village Hero, which is the only attack card uh, on Pomodoro, and it says, uh, well, it's a one cost sixty uh, attack, so it's pretty basic. It says get 10 uh, plus 10 attack uh, whenever this actually grants shield to other allies. So right, that's why like, the other cards that I just mentioned, right? Uh, of course, leaf bug and stuff like that can also all of these shield can be put on other allies and and by basically placing shield on the other ally, you buff this by 10 and the cap is 60. So it's a bit unfortunate if the cap is like. 100 that will feel a bit better or even 90 because basically then it, the maximum you can get is one cost 120 which is basically like a tiny dino uh, which is of course not bad but it doesn't even have retain uh, as tiny dino does so I don't know um, yeah it really needs to play it six times or at least like yeah six shield card in order to get it to the maximum yeah it's gonna be a bit slow so that's why I'm not too sure what kind of like team Pomodoro fits in? I would say sustain is probably the main one. Um, yeah, 
Uh, in rare era, you might want to couple it with like the way of bug kind of uh, uh, bug so that you can get the most out of the shield, perhaps. Um, yeah, so that's what this is probably the toughest to, to kind of use, I feel, uh, out of the three. Okay, so let's talk about the last one. Ooh, uh, don't have this here. Okay, let me just refresh this and see if the image comes out. Uh, okay, take a bit of time. Okay, here we go. So, uh, Vinoki, so this is the one that I think everyone is really hyping up um, just because it is very strong. First of all, Poison is already very strong uh, in Season 5 and it is a reptile, that's poison theme, right? Uh, let's just look at the rune first. So rune already very strong. Uh, we already kind of know, but it's basically it's Vinoki's poison. Uh, until around 4, when your turn starts, apply one poison to random enemy four times, meaning four poison stacks per round, all right? Uh, basically, it gives you 16 poison stacks in the first four rounds, right, and in total. And I would say that's pretty significant. Okay, of course, like, it's not too, you know, s strong for epic and mystics is because then like, after round four, it doesn't have any effect. But it does allow you to get early poison stacks up you know, pretty quickly. But of course, like in mystic, you, there, there are a lot more ways to stack up uh, poison faster with the charm and so on, but in rare, I think it's pretty good. Uh, and then the poison vial is the charm. Uh, it says apply one poison to a random enemy actually, apply one more poison per energy spent. So not too exciting, I must say. Um, very uh, pretty, pretty weak. It applies maybe two or maybe a maximum of three poison, uh, which you might as well run um, uh, the other, uh, what's that called again? I think I wrote it down here, right? Um, yeah, might as well run the yeah uh, Viper's Venom. But of course, Viper's Venom can only be put on attack card, but still, I mean, that's just, I think, uh, yeah, might, might as well run that card, uh, run that charm. Uh, and that's also a rare charm and also, also only 3 PP. Okay, let's get into the cards because the cards are the interesting ones. Okay, so first of all, you have Punky. It is a power as well. And again, no target any ally, meaning it can only be applied to Vinoki. The uh, effect is that when your turn starts, apply one poison to a random enemy four times. And there's no, like, no limit, like, meaning it lasts forever right, until the end of the battle. And yeah, it sounds pretty crazy. Okay, that, okay. first of all, I'll talk about the weakness first. The weakness is that it doesn't do anything round one. Like the round that you apply, like you play it, it doesn't do anything because it says when your turn starts, so it only kind of starts in your next turn. But still, imagine you have a pretty long game, maybe like you, know, you have six or even seven rounds. That's like 20 stacks, so effectively it's like one cost, uh, one energy, you play 20 stacks, all right? of poison yeah so i, I don't know this just, this just sounds pretty crazy to me uh of course you lose a bit of tempo but then yeah you do get a lot of value so i think of course i that's assuming that this actually stays alive until the end of the battle right uh but still i think again it is yeah i think it's a strong and it might even be strong enough that like it can be played in epic and probably even mystic i feel um you you look in the archive and you'll see why okay uh then let's look at um, the attack cards. Okay, so the two attack cards, uh, both are one cost, 60 attack, um, 60 base attack, and then both of these scales with poison in different ways. So Chemical Fang scales with poison in that it heals 1 HP per poison on the target. Uh, this one is less exciting, I would say. Right? Um, I wish it's actually like 2 HP, then it feels more like even stronger, but I think it, as it is, it's already pretty strong. So on average, maybe the uh, opponent has 20 uh, stacks, uh, then uh, 20 poison stacks, then basically it's a 60 attack, then heals 20. Yeah, it's okay. Right? It's, this is not too exciting. Okay, poison tube is definitely an exciting one. One cost 60 uh, attack base, but then it says plus two damage, plus two damage per poison on the target. I wish it's plus one to be honest. Like plus two is just pretty crazy. Imagine again, uh, not that difficult to get to 20 stacks. If it's 20 stacks, it's already one cost, 100 attack. It's 30 stacks, which is pretty easy to get in, like maybe, I won't say easy, but like, not difficult to get in, like uh, epic or even mystic, right? Then 30 stacks is uh, 120 attack already, right? Is it? Yeah. 
And of course, the 40 stacks would then be 100, um, uh, 140, I think. Uh, so yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty strong, I would say. Um, if it's plus one and it turned down the power level a bit, uh, maybe a bit too weak, I don't know, but this just feels very strong, I think. Um, uh, but this is probably not the strongest card. It's probably not the problematic card. It is, you know, on the stronger side. But of course, compared to the tiny dino, also one cost two hundred and twenty. Is 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 fair? Okay, fair is not the right word, but like, it's it's okay. Uh, okay, in the sense that it's not like that broken. Uh, okay, then uh, let's look at this one first. Uh, Death Shroom is actually a very uh, normal looking card, really, and it's pretty normal card. It's just one cost. The 30 heal and then it says target any ally. The heal can be targeted on any ally, and then it says apply three poisons to a random enemy three times. So basically, nine stacks, very normal looking uh, poison applying card. So that's that's just that. Uh, and then, okay, let's talk about this card. Like, whenever you see two cost card, usually they, they do something strong, right? So this one's a two cost card. AoE heal 40, right? So heals allies for 40. Uh, and then it says target any enemy, I right? double the target's poison stacks. So it is quite a big commitment in terms of energy. It does cost two, uh, but it is a skill card. So you can uh, basically uh, uh, ignore any taunts or something. You can just apply this effect to any enemy. Uh, of course, the best case scenario is that you go from 20 to 40, which basically means two costs applying 20 poison, which is insane, really. Uh, well, actually, I don't say it's that insane because like, it's like one cost apply 10, so it's, it's still okay, right? Um, but because you can target any enemy, so you usually just you know, target the carry, so this could be pretty strong. So, uh, but I would say it's okay, two costs is still clunky to you, so this is kind of what is keeping the power level down but with the uh, AOE heal it definitely helps as well uh, and of course AOE heal you can put like a white sage or something on to cleanse against like uh, a in a mirror as well so that's actually you know pretty good and that another I guess combo is that you can combo it with the uh, what's that called the venom um, burst as well right with the the epic rune, right? Uh, Venom burst. So basically, you play Venom Nail, which doubles the poison. Maybe let's say from 15 to 30. <laughs> That's already quite a lot, right? And then once you have 30, then Venom burst. I think now does uh, five per. Uh, yeah, I think it's five, right? Per uh, poison stacks. Then yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, you can definitely like do this. Uh, Venom Nail first. Wait for a turn. There's already a lot of da poison damage, and then you can use Venom Burst to KO the opponent. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's a good combo um, to snipe off certain carry. I would say so. Yeah, definitely watch out for it. And yeah, especially because of this, their skill card, meaning they can uh, ignore taunt, which is can be a problem just because other kind of cards like might rely on uh, attacks to put poison or yeah, and so on. So yeah, this is definitely a, a good way of going about taunt. Okay, finally we have a centipede, which is an interesting card. Zero cost, five shield. Again, you can put like white sage on this uh, for cleanse or something. And uh, the interesting part is, okay, you can target any ally. So sure, the five doesn't really matter too much. Of course, like the cleanse can help with white sage. And then it says limit three. Apply three poisons to a random enemy. So zero cost apply three poisons is already pretty good. And it says add one centipede to discard pile. So this is the tricky part, okay? Because um, every time you play this, you add one centipede to your discard pile, which is actually not a good thing because it dilutes your deck quite a bit. Um, so that's the trade-off there. So yeah, you might not. Okay, so there, there is that limit three as well, so you can't really just have a lot of centipede and then you know, like keep playing it. Um, so the, the limit really doesn't matter. I do feel like, okay, I won't say it doesn't matter. Of course it does, but like um, sometimes you don't really want to play this card just because it slows down your draw quite a bit. Yeah. Um, okay, well, the upside, of course, is that being a zero cost card is always good just to have a zero cost card to get out of sleep. Um, and sometimes it's just good, right? You just have a zero cost card, 
you don't even want to play it, you just use it, it doesn't have any effect, and then just get off sleep. So that's another way of using it, I would say. Okay, so of course, I, uh, yeah, Finoki definitely goes into poison build, and I would say it's more of the more attack focus variant, I feel, just because it doesn't really have any way of uh, putting opponent to sleep kind of thing, doesn't have that much, um, if you like, that much defense other than the AoE heal. Uh, which is not the greatest in terms of you know defense. So uh, yeah, I think yeah with, with these attack cards, it definitely goes well with the more attack kind of uh, poison bit with side barb kind of thing because side barb can also target any enemy kind of thing. So yeah, with side barb and then with this uh, what's that called again? The venom nail. Yeah, that's already a lot of poison stacks on a particular enemy. Okay, so that's my first impression of the three new starter axes. And what can you do with those? Right? And of course, it is about the contest. So, um, contests basically give us a, well, players a way to, no, it's, it's in, incentivizes players to use the starter axes. And in this case, it has AXS rewards as well. So, here are the rewards. I just show the the first three ranks, and you can see rank one getting 100 AXS, rank two 80, and rank three 70 AXS, which is not too bad, but of course, it's not easy to get because it requires a lot of grinding. And um, also, okay, it's good to have these choice boxes for the rare runes and charms as well, but I would say those are not the most important part. I think, yeah, for sure, AXS is, is the, the main one. Okay, so how do we you know, actually uh, gain points to rank up on the leaderboard for the contest and there, there are a lot more missions than this but these three are the three that are so-called infinite right? I mean you can grind the others you are kind of expected to do um, and it has a limit so meaning everyone will just get those anyway uh, but if you want to really rank up you have to do this the good part is that at least you can play in um, blitz doesn't have to play in rank so doesn't have to, yeah, you don't have to climb down to do it. Uh, and Blitz also is good because it's faster. Uh, but the, the downside is that the whole contest lasts for four days and there's no limit. So, you, uh, I mean, it, of course, there's no limit otherwise, right? Uh, then it's more like a time thing, right? But in this case, it's more like whoever grinds the most basically. Uh, yeah, wins in a way. So I quite like it. It rewards players who really just plays a lot uh, and invest time and effort in the game. So 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 in a way, I would say it's a bad thing. But of course, it is quite a long grind because it is what three to four days or something, right? So 28th, 29th, and then 30th, 31st, and then first, right? So four days is gonna be a long grind. So yeah, okay, so I think that is pretty much it. So this is the time to really um, get your starter axes and uh, start leveling them up. And hopefully like, you might want to build a team around one of them. Poison is probably the easiest one, right? With the, uh, here with the Finoki. Uh, yeah, if you have a poison team already, then this definitely fits very well. Uh, I would say it's probably a bit tougher for Pomodoro. Uh, maybe a sustain kind of build might work if you have some sustain axes. And if not, then I think Momo is probably the like the one to go to if you don't have poison and you don't have sustain. Then uh, meaning like you just play aggro, then probably it's going to be Momo. Uh, especially play with feather, I would say, and maybe other uh, attack buffs as well. So actually, something I mentioned here is uh, where is it? Um, yeah, play it with uh, feathers for sure, and maybe even a bit of rage and bubbles. Bubbles are also very good as well. So yeah, I think that could uh, yeah could be strong, especially in rare where maybe taunt the doesn't is not as common just because you don't have the gecko mask that kind of thing. So yeah, should be good. Okay, so I think I'll probably end here with this video. So thanks for joining me, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.